Now I'm going to move on to, I think, the most competitive pool of all. Uh, that is Pool D in Miami, Florida. We have, in odds order, the pool favorite is the Dominican Republic. And that is not shocking when we go through that roster. Minus 250 for the DR to win Pool D. Venezuela next with a plus 400 to win Pool D. Also have a bunch of MLB All-Stars and Hall of Famers on Team Venezuela. Followed up with even odds by Team Puerto Rico, managed by Yadier Molina. Also a bunch of MLB All-Stars, potential Hall of Famers. Then there's a big drop-off. There is Team Israel. Our friend Alex Katz will be on Team Israel. We'll be rooting for them, plus 7,500, and Team Nicaragua, plus 10,000. And I'll start from the bottom, give them their love. Team Nicaragua, like a lot of the teams from Pool A, um, there's not really any major or minor league level talent going on here. Uh, you have guys like Jonathan Loisica. You have Esramo Ramirez, DC Ramirez. Now some guys who have had some uh, a cup of tea in major and minor league baseball. Jonathan Loisica is really the one all-star on this team. Uh, Alex Blandino, interestingly enough, is an infielder for Nicaragua. Uh, he'll be representing this team in Miami. I don't think it will be nearly enough. Uh, this is a stacked, stacked, stacked pool D. Um, this is a tough draw for Team Nicaragua. I think they are obviously the ugly duckling of this pool. I think they're going to really be playing to win that game versus Israel. Um, and even in the game of baseball, in which anything can happen in a one-game format, I don't think they have any significant chance against the DR, Venezuela, or Puerto Rico. Uh, they just don't have the bats to keep up with this pitching. Um, and I don't think their pitching uh, can get around some of these MLB all-star level bats. Going next to Team Israel, they're a very interesting team. They shocked the world last WBC in 2017 by advancing out of their group. They didn't even have odds on a lot of websites to win the tournament, as our good friend Alex Katz was saying. Um, Alex will be representing Team Israel, and they have a bunch of major and minor league talent. You know, Alex is a minor league talent right now. Uh, they have Jake Kalish, who's also in the minor leagues, Jake Fishman, uh, looking at some other names, Zach Weiss, who has played for Arizona before, um, and some major league talent, though. They have Zach Giloff, they have Ty Kelly, Danny Valencia, Alex Dickerson, Jock Peterson. Um, it's not a bad team, I think. This team could compete for second in another pool. Um, they would finish third and fourth, kind of that level across these pools. Um, but like I said, for Team Nicaragua, I just don't think their pitching can catch up to the Hall of Fame level potential of the three other teams in their pool, the three top teams in their pool, rather. Uh, the only difference with Israel is that they have really legitimate minor league level pitchers and in a one-game format, I think some of these pitchers can hold their own. You know, Alex spoke about his experience facing Team Netherlands and Didi Gregorius when he was in Tokyo for the last WBC. I think we can see some decent matchups. I don't think Israel will go down without a fight. I think they can win against one of the three. They can pull out a win against Puerto Rico, Venezuela, or the DR. I think they will beat Nicaragua but I don't think they'll be able to get that elusive third win, which I really think is what you'll need to get out of the group, unless these other juggernauts beat up on each other. And that'll bring us into Team Puerto Rico. Their joint second favorite to win the group with Team Venezuela. And Team Puerto Rico, you think of Puerto Rico as having this really elite level talent on a major league level, and they do. How about Jose Barrios? How about Edwin and Alexis Diaz? Jorge Lopez, Marcus Stroman, Derek Rodriguez. You know, these guys, all-stars and solid level players for this team, Puerto Rico. However, it's not quite at the level of some of these other teams, in my opinion. Emilio Pagan is also in there. Uh, I think they're going to be pretty deep. I would have a hard time seeing them lose to Team Nicaragua or to Team Israel, but I think they can beat any team. And part of why I think they're going to finish third, and I'll tip my hand there, is because of their lineup. Uh, looking at their catchers, pretty good. 
Martin Maldonado, MJ Melendez, Christian Vasquez, all potentially catching for them. I think Martin Maldonado is going to get the catching nod. He is a really solid defensive catcher. And you look at their infield, Javi Baez, um, Kike Hernandez is listed as an infielder. He'll probably play center field. Francis- Francisco Lindor is the captain of their team. He's going to play shortstop. After that, there's a fall off, really. Edwin Diaz, the Astros, Emmanuel Rivera, Neftali Soto. Um, I think we're going to see Emmanuel Rivera at third base. We could even see Christian Vasquez potentially at first base um, or Machine or Edwin Diaz or Neftali Soto, probably likely as we'll be playing first base. Looking at the outfield, it's not a lot of names you recognize. Um, there's Eddie Rosario, of course. I think he'll be starting in left field. But then we have Henry Ramos, Nelson Velasquez, um, and John John Shui Fargas. Uh, I think Rosario is going to play left. Kike will play center. Uh, and then we're looking at Ramos or Velasquez in right field. I say Christian Vasquez probably DHs. Um, but here's where the lineup just isn't great. You know, this would be a pretty good MLB team, honestly. But I don't even think it would be like a division winner on an MLB team. And when you're going up against teams, Venezuela and the DR, uh, I don't think this team can cut it. I think PR will be fun. They're going to have a lot of support in Miami. They always show out. The fans are awesome for Team Puerto Rico, so never count them out. They're going to have a good showing. Um, It sucks that Carlos Correa will not be able to make it uh, as he is expecting a newborn child soon. Uh, Correa probably would have been a great third base option for them that would have brought this PR team to a different level that can compete with the likes of Team Venezuela. But that's where I'm going to go next is Team Venezuela. And here is where I think we're going to have a really, really solid team. Uh, Looking at their pitching, how about Pablo Lopez, Jesus Lizardo, Martin Perez, Darwinson Hernandez, Eduardo Rodriguez, Ranger Suarez, deep, deep, deep starting pitching and relief pitching depth. Um, A lot of these guys are going to help them as swings. You know, Luis Garcia of the Astros is going to be an in-between guy. Jose Alvarado as a relief arm. Ranger Suarez, I could even see being a 2-3 inning guy, not as a starter. We've seen how he is versatile and able to adapt. I think Venezuela are really set up nice on the pitching arms. You need a lot of arms that can get through these top talented lineups of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, and their lineup backs up the arms. It's not quite as deep, but you're talking Hall of Famers uh, and All-Stars here. Catching behind the plate, Salvador Perez is likely going to catch. Um, unless they put him at DH, we'll see where they get with him. There's Omar Narvaez and Robinson Chirinos. Um, I think either of them, depending on how they're going with their defensive setup, could put them as catcher. Salvador Perez is very much a negative, negative catcher defensively, but he has that pop, and they're going to find a way to get Salvi in the lineup. I'm sure of it. So we'll see. Chirinos is a bit older. I think Narvaez will likely be the catching option, but I don't be surprised to see Salvi behind the plate because they're going to mash, especially against teams like Nicaragua or Team Israel. Um, They might get more conservative with their defensive catching alignment against really athletic teams that get on base a lot, like the DR or Puerto Rico. Um, Going to their infield, Jose Altuve at second base. Um, Glaber Torres is probably his backup second baseman. Uh, At third base, you're looking at Eugenio Suarez or Eduardo Escobar. Andres Jimenez probably going to slot in at shortstop for this team. Um... Maybe Renjifo, Glaber could also play short. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, So it's probably going to be Jimenez after Miguel Rojas had to pull out of the WBC uh, due to the injury with Gavin Lux. Um, That has made the team a lot more shallow. Uh, Miguel Rojas decided to stay with the team, with his club team, rather. We also have Luis Arias, who's probably going to play first base. They have a lot of middle infield or versatile middle infielder, third base type. So we'll see Luis Arias probably playing at first base, which he's a really plus-plus defender right there, a batting title champion last year. Jose Altuve has won a batting title. Labor Torres has hit a bunch of home runs before. Eddie Escobar, 
Andres Jimenez had a five war season, four war season last year. Um, not too bad. The team is really good. Not to mention Eugenio Suarez, who has been pretty great for the Seattle Mariners and the Reds in the past. And this outfield is really good. There are only three outfielders deep, but it's David Peralta. Okay, fine. Anthony Santander, perennial all-star level player, as we see for the Baltimore Orioles in the AL East. And at center field is going to be Ronald Acuna Jr. He is really going to show out, I hope. Um, Acuna is one of the best players in all of baseball, one of the most talented players in all of baseball. I know he's been ailing a little bit with the Braves. I think if you've seen him in the Dominican League or the Venezuelan League, I think he played in the Venezuelan League last year. Uh, he shows out and he gives it his all. And listed as a DH, they have an old but fantastic Miguel Cabrera. Uh, so you're looking at a DH option between Miguel Cabrera, Salvador Perez, Glaber Torres, I would think. Um, so you're looking at a lineup that is nine all-stars deep. The way I see it, I think the lineup's going to go something like this. I think we have uh, Jimenez to lead off, uh, then Altuve, Acuna, two or three, Santander at four. Maybe then you jump to Salvi Perez if he's starting at five. Um, then you can go Eugenio Suarez, uh, Glaber Torres, as he's if he's your DH. Don't forget about Luis Arias. He's going to hit somewhere seven to eight. And then depending on your catcher, you have like Narvaez or, or Torinos at your nine. Um, that's not a bad lineup. You can switch Miguel Cabrera uh, with Salvi Perez. I know I said Glaber. He probably wouldn't play. Um, depends on Eddie Escobar, who plays third. That's a really solid, solid lineup. But the best of all, I think, is going to be the Dominican Republic. Now, I think the Dominican Republic have one of the best lineups ever assembled. And unfortunately, Vlad Guerrero Jr. had to drop out last minute, in which I think they legitimately would have had the best lineup ever put together in a non-all-star format. But let's go through their roster. Um, how about Sandy Alcantara? You heard of him? Uh, Genesis Cabrera, Diego Castillo, Johnny Cueto, Camila Doval, Luis Garcia, Christian Javier, Cesar Valdez, Hector Neris, Gregory Soto, Rafael Montero. Like, this is a different level of depth in pitching. I think the DR have some of the best talent. They're also going to have some of the best fan support in the entire tournament, especially in Miami. This pitching depth is really, really good. I think they have a few shutdown guys who will uh, be solid for them. They definitely have the best pitching rotation and outlook of all of the Pool D candidates. Um, Yimmy Garcia, I didn't even say. Luis Garcia, Carlos Estevez, uh, Roenzi Contreras. Like All of these are... Pretty solid major league guys, um, complemented by a bunch of all stars and Cy Young winners. At catcher, catcher is probably the weak spot for them in terms of positioning. Uh, we're looking at Francisco Mejia, Gary Sanchez. I think Gary could get the start, um, though Mejia is definitely more solid defensively. Um, Gary gives you that high end pop, but Gary hasn't been in spring. Gary doesn't have a team, so we could see Mejia pretty easily. But this infield. Let me give you some of these infield options. Manny Machado, third base, and he might even be playing a first base. Rafael Devers, third baseman, shortstop. How about Willie Adamas, Wander Franco, and Jeremy Pena? Three all star level shortstops at some of the best in all of baseball, near top 10, each of them. Um, all from one country, all playing on the same roster. Crazy. Second base options, we're looking at Robinson Cano, Hall of Fame second baseman. Uh, well past his prime, obviously we all know, but he is a Dominican legend. He was the player of the tournament, I believe, in 2013, or he was on the all-tournament team at least. Um, Cattell Marte, who can be a second baseman, or he can be an outfielder. Uh, Gene Segura. And then also left over, I didn't even say, uh, Jaime Candelario. Looking at this team with Vlad Guerrero going down, I think it changes the outlook. Some people were mentioning that Manny Machado might play first base. Um, I'm more in the camp 
of putting Rafael Devers over there or even a Robinson Cano. I think Robinson Cano would be a more shorthanded fielder. I don't think Devers would be great with the scoops, but I think Cano could uh, could go get it out there. Um, and that way you get him in the lineup. I don't think he makes the lineup before this, um, or at least in the best lineup, even though they probably push to play him. I think we're looking at Machado at third. We're looking at... Uh, you can go Pena, Adamas, or Franco at short. I think one of the others plays second. I think it's probably going to be Wander Franco at short and Jeremy Pena at second. Uh, Jeremy Pena being a really shorthanded middle infielder, even though Cattell Marte is there as well. Um, and then Robinson Cano at first. And then I think you DH Rafael Devers. You cannot not have Rafael Devers in your lineup. Because then you move on to these outfielders, and this is scary. Um, how about Juan Soto? Probably playing right field, I would think, in this lineup. Julio Rodriguez, one of the best young players in baseball, one of the best players in baseball, period, and definitely one of the best offensive center fielders um, who didn't put in a bad showing on the defensive side as well. He's going to be your center fielder for the DR and then you have take your pick between Teoscar Hernandez and Eloy Jimenez. I think Teoscar probably plays left field, though Eloy gives you that more pop. Teoscar gives you a bunch of contact. Um, and then Nelson Cruz is listed as a DH. I don't think Nelson Cruz is the DH in their best lineup. Uh, so the way I kind of see it is to go Machado, take your pick on a shortstop. The other one plays second base. Marte is on the bench. Put Cano at first. Soto, Julio, Teoscar from right to left. Let's see what they did on the lineup for today. Oh, so here's their lineup that they put out for their exhibition game against the Braves today. Julio Rodriguez in center, Rafael Devers as DH, Manny Machado at third. They put Teoscar in right field. Robinson Cano was playing first, like I thought. Gary Sanchez behind the plate. Eloy Jimenez in left field. Willie Adamas at second, and Pena at short. Okay, interesting. So the only differences to what I said was that uh, Soto was not playing. So I think Soto will take Eloy Jimenez's spot in left field and maybe put Teoscar to left field, um, considering that Teoscar is batting fourth in this lineup. So I think that's a decent prediction. And then they put Adamas at second and Pena at short. So Pena's a really good defensive shortstop. I could see Jeremy Pena being a starting shortstop. And then you use Franco as your platoon, second, short, third base, uh, third base guy. All of that is to say that this is one of the best teams ever assembled. If I'm counting potential Hall of Famers, um, I could see Manny, Manny Machado is probably a Hall of Famer. Robinson Cano is a Hall of Fame level player. You have the PED stuff. Uh, we're looking at Juan Soto is probably on his path to being a Hall of Famer. Even debatable now, one of the best starts to a career ever. Rafael Devers could get to that kind of level. Um, that's just Hall of Fame talent alone. You're looking at All-Stars, J-Rod, Teoscar, Gary Sanchez, Eloy, Adamas, um, not even to mention Wander Franco, Tel Marte. All of these guys are really, really good. They're going to mash. All of that being said, I think the DR are the likeliest to win the tournament. I have them finishing second in this pool. And the reason I have them finishing second is I think Venezuela are going all in on this DR game. I think Venezuela have really deep pitching, uh, and I think Venezuela just gets them. I think the DR are going to be a little bit vulnerable. Um, they have the biggest target on their back of anyone in the Americas that are playing, I would say, aside from Japan. Uh, and I think they are the best team talent-wise in the tournament. You can make an argument for the USA. You can make a lesser argument for Japan, I think. I think the DR are have a lot of pressure, um, but they're going to be playing really loose. You know, they're a lot of fun, a really, really fun team um, with some of this awesome, awesome talent. I think Venezuela is just going to go 4-0. I think Venezuela are that good. I think the Dominican Republic finished second in this pool.